Hey everyone, it's time for the mask of Plo Koon. And I'm going to show you how I turned a cheap latex mask like this into something like this. Let's go. So to do the mask for Plo Koon, which is arguably the most important part of the costume, it's the most recognisable part of the costume, I decided to buy one that's readily available. It's, I believe, a Ruby's mask. These range from about 40 to 50 pounds. They're not cheap, but the sculpt is actually quite good. The pictures on the websites look great, um, so I ordered it and just waited for it to arrive. When it did arrive, however... <sighs> oh boy. Like I said, the sculpt isn't bad. It's actually quite good. But when you get it out of the box, the pictures I have are for you here is after I've had it out and kind of padded for a while to give it some shape. When it comes out of the box, it looks like a dead chicken or something. It looks terrible. It's all squashed up. It's a pinky orange color, which is awful. Uh, in no iterations is he that color. His skin is orange, let's face it. Um, but yeah, it's just when you get it out, it's just kind of like... Uh, but I expected this, I'd seen other reviews of this mask, so we were expecting it, but it still doesn't make it any more... So I knew I was going to repaint it. Now repainting latex masks is non-trivial. Uh, to do it properly, you have to strip the paint back and then paint with very specialized paints, including uh, specialized thinners. Um, they're really not good for you, and uh, if you're just doing this as a kind of one-off and as a hobby thing like I do, um, I didn't want this costume to cost a lot of money. Uh, it's really difficult to do that way. So I did a bit of research. I looked around for a while, seeing the best way to paint latex masks. And there are a few different ways uh, that I saw, but by far the easiest way I saw was you just paint it with liquid latex. You mix liquid latex in with regular paint. This can be acrylic, or in my case, I got some emulsion, the kind of paint you just put on your walls. And this worked great. So what you do is mix the liquid latex and the paint. You mix it about 70 to 30 latex to paint. And this makes uh, a paint with a makeup that's very similar to the mask itself. It actually sticks to the already painted mask rather well. I did have some peeling spots later on, uh, which weren't too bad, but for the most part, it sticks way better than I expected. So if you're gonna give us a try, I'd highly recommend doing it this way. So I just went to the store and got a tester pot of wall paint. It was about £2.50, um, three or four bucks. Uh, for those in the States, it's really not a lot. And I got a hell of a lot of paint in there for my needs. Uh, you can choose from all the colours that they have in there because you get all the little swatches you can choose from. So I picked a nice vibrant orange colour towards skin tones a little bit. Uh, and this turned out to be a great colour. So after I mixed it all up, I could go about painting it. So I've got the mask set up here. Uh, this is just on a, on a post to support it. And we're gonna get rid of this horrible pink color and make him orange. I need to carefully go around the, the breathing apparatus here. To paint it, I just used a sponge brush. I bought a big pack of these for not a lot of money on eBay. Uh, they're really useful and you can just throw them away when you're done with it. But I just sponged on all the color uh, so we didn't get any nasty brush marks on there. I needed to do a couple of layers just to get the coverage to cover that awful color that was on there already. And then I actually decided to try and do a wash in a brown color. I mixed some acrylic brown uh, to make that color with the latex and tried to do that all over to get in all the grooves. And then my idea was to go back over it again and uh, sort of pull out the highlights. I really wasn't happy in how this turned out. I mean, I painted the brown on, I was doing it and it just looked awful. I was so unhappy. It's one of those moments in the project where you just get so disheartened and you think, what am I doing? I can't do this. And um, it was one of those moments. But after that had passed, and I think I left it for a day or two, I came back to it and decided to paint it all back in that bright orange. I did two or three layers of that bright orange color just to cover everything that I'd done and to get myself back to that kind of neutral state. From there, the detailing work I decided to do was with my airbrush. So I've done my layers of latex paint and I've just started going in with my airbrush. Now, the latex paint went on okay. I did some dark washes, which I wasn't really happy with. So then went in with this bright orange. 
which is much better. I don't know if you can see, I just started going in with my airbrush, adding some detailing. This is looking great, so I'm just going to build up some layers with the airbrush to try and get some depth and make it look a bit more like a living thing. Now, of course, you can't put liquid latex through your airbrush because this is going to really gum your airbrush up. Once you've got that base liquid latex and paint layer down, any washes you then do with acrylic airbrush paint over the top are just going to sit. They're not going to crack unless you go really thick. Then, of course, it'll probably crack. But to just get the kind of shading colors that I wanted, it worked so well. I mixed up some pinky kind of browns and things like that and went in and did some shading. I got a lot of practice with my airbrush getting different types of line. I tried doing wide shading lines and then actually tried to do some veins on the skin to make it look a bit more organic. This worked really well. I couldn't be happier for a first go at trying to paint something organic like this. It went so well and you'll see on the close-ups what it looked like. Now I disassembled the mask to pull off all the different components that were glued together originally. The two tendril pieces came off and also pulled off the two breather pieces at the bottom. These are actually the wrong way around, which is stupid. Um, they just should be the other way around. So I swapped them and trimmed away some of the, um, the mask around that area so that those breather things sat flush because they sit quite far out and they should sit on the big main piece on his face. Now I ended up leaving the eyes and this breather piece in their original paint job. It looks fine. It's sort of like a goldy bronzy color. Um, I just made sure that I touched in anything that I'd done on the skin that had overlapped. But otherwise, that was fairly easy. I've got it all painted up really nicely. But as you can see, he's still very squishy. He's got no structure in there. So we've got to kind of sort that out. Now, he also needs some mesh in the eyes. So I'm going to make that. And then we're going to add some structure to the face to make all this solid. And also get these tusks back on. Now I thought about 3D printing these eye lenses, they're kind of like mesh with circles in it. I don't think you can get anything quite like it, but I, I considered modelling it and printing it, but I think I can actually just make it out of styrene, so I'm just going to template it and then hopefully just cut it out of this, fill in these eyes. So here's my cardboard template, you can see the eye shape I've drawn there and then worked out what I need, so now just to cut this out of styrene. There was another thing that I did to increase the accuracy of the mask. Where the two tendril things attached to the breathing bits at the bottom, there's actually two metal connectors. Now these were just painted on, on the original mask, they looked horrible, it was just silver paint on the sculpt. On the original, they used airbrush connector hoses. Now these are just quick uh, disconnects that you can use for an airbrush to swap out airbrushes or hoses. I think they were a couple of pounds each. It was well worth it. And these were just glued in place. And then the tendrils were glued in the top and it just makes the mask look a whole lot more expensive than it actually is. The mask itself is quite big, so I need to add some structure on the inside. The breather piece got a piece of styrene templated and cut and glued on the inside. This gives a nice solid shape on the front. I also bought a cheap Halloween mask that's uh, form fitting around the eyes. Uh, this I tested on myself, it fitted really well. So I glued this to the inside of the mask and this means that the mask can sit really nicely against my face and also gives some extra shape across the bridge of the nose and to that portion of the mask. To make it sit comfortably on my head when I'm wearing it, I just shove a piece of foam in the top. You can put any kind of padding in there you like or fill it with expanding foam, something like that. But I find I just have a piece of random foam, I just kind of shove it in there, pull it over my head and it gets it to the right kind of place on my face. I added a small piece of Velcro on the back just to do it up so that pulls it tight and allows it to sit in the rest of the costume. And that's it, that's how I modded this off the shelf mask into an awesome costume piece. So there it is guys, this one was really fun to do. Uh, he looks great now, I have him on this little stand and he sits on the shelf. It was definitely a learning curve doing this, I've never painted a latex mask before. And of course there are things you'd do differently if you're gonna do it again. You learn a lot of stuff doing new things like this. I mean he looks so good, look at it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sit and look at it. Boop. I hope you enjoyed this one, he certainly turned out great. I'm looking forward to showing you the whole costume together. We're now at the end of the Bilbidus. I've showed you just about everything that I've done for this costume. Now it's time to put it all together. 
that will be coming up very soon. And of course, I look forward to seeing you there. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.